Do you see us Thank you and very do you much. hear us? I see you and I hear you. And um, I will start to share my screen now. So, okay. you see my uh, screen? Is that so? We see you, but we don't see your screen. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, now. Yeah? You can go. Okay, so uh, here you see my associations. I'm a research group leader in the Netherlands Cancer Institute. I lead, I'm leading the working group of health economics in the European Organization of Cancer Institutes. And I'm the CEO of Rijnstaat Hospital in Arnhem, as you stated. And I'm, I'm also emeritus president of the European Organization of Cancer Institutes. Uh, what I decided to focus on, because when it comes to health economics, there's a large scope of, of topics that you can uh, deal with, but especially access to innovative drugs is an issue that will be important for the coming years. And if you see already on, only in a matter of two years, the number of drug targets that is increasing in uh, in the pipeline of research and development of pharma, you see what enormous challenge is, is coming towards us when it comes to uh, treatment and costs in cancer care. And if you look, and this is uh, the parallel data from the United States, uh, the, the cost of, of uh, health care are increasing annually and the cost of expensive drugs is uh, taking a, a larger step of, uh, or wedge of the total healthcare budget year by year. And so we need to think of instruments to bring innovations to the patients and to guarantee equal access. And we are involved in a number of research projects in uh, looking into this, uh, for which we use the Organization of European Cancer Institutes infrastructure. There are over 110 institutes, uh, mainly in Europe, but we also have interests from uh, around the world, um, to, as the objective of the OCI is to improve quality and equity in cancer care and research, the top that we deal with are uh, really relevant for uh, cancer mission and uh, regional cancer policy, because uh, when you look in data I, I will present, you see that there is considerable inequality in excess in uh, cancer care and excess cancer drugs in uh, Europe. We have started uh, We cannot hear you anymore. I, I think someone is in the car and has his microphone out. We cannot see your slide, Wim. Uh, I, I see my slide uh, on the screen. Yeah. Yes, now we... Yeah. So what I uh, present is the objective of the working group of housing economics uh, that initiated the number of projects of which I will send you, and that will is done in cooperation with European Fair Pricing Network, which is a non-profit forum uh, stimulated by a number of cancer charities in different uh, eleven different countries in the 
European Union. And uh, one of those is to assess the access of patients and not expensive patients uh, medicines. And the second one is to review the social economic consequences uh, for cancer of, of treatment for cancer patients. So first what I show you is uh, some data from an analysis uh, on the availability and access to innovative medicines related to the uh, EMA approval and through interviews and surveys with hospital pharmacists we try to assess whether actually the patients are and when and, and for what indications patients have access to uh, certain innovative drugs. And I show you some preliminary and sometimes confidential data on uh, certain innovative cancer drugs and we show uh, whether the drugs were available in early access, in regular contacts, in, in off-label uh, prescription or not available at at all. And if you look, and we had responses from Switzerland, Italy, uh, Hungary, Belgium, the Netherlands, and France, and you see that there is a complete uh, different picture per country and per hospital when it comes to the availability of innovative cancer drugs. And we have uh, even uh, differentiated this data into uh, actual indications per tumor type and you see that the picture becomes even more chaotic and we see that between countries but also within countries there are huge differences in uh, availability uh, of innovative cancer drugs uh, for certain tumor types uh, and differences per drug and if we relate that uh, to the time after uh, EMA approval or related to the moment of EMA approval, we see uh, the same picture of huge differences uh, that's, and that is sometimes in years uh, uh, that a certain innovative drug is available in uh, country A uh, and after a considerable time in country B. But again, Again, we also see within countries huge differences of availability of patient access uh, to these drugs. And uh, um, we think that it should really be an issue of, of cancer societies, of uh, professional societies, uh, but also of uh, health uh, system responsibility uh, uh, agencies and responsible persons and politicians to stimulate equal access to uh, innovative cancer drugs because especially in this picture you can see uh, that sometimes three or almost four years difference exists in uh, patients receiving a, a certain treatment for their tumor uh, in the first time <clears throat> and we think that is hardly justifiable so uh, another issue that we think, apart from differences in access, is, is the consequences for patients uh, when it comes to their socio-economic uh, status. And together with the University of Heidelberg, and, and, and sponsored also by the OCI and the European Fair Pricing Network, we have started a uh, European survey on socio-economic consequences uh, of cancer. This is a survey uh, directed towards patients. It contains 41 questions and it addresses demographics, type of cancer, stage and treatment, but also financial effects, stress and coping strategies, quality of life assessment. It is translated and available in 16 languages and it is a, an anonymous, so GPA uh, uh, proof. Uh, setup. And here you can see uh, the uh, involved institutions 
in this uh, uh, in the next slide, it will appear in a, in a moment, and we have uh, uh, a good response from a number of countries. Uh, but you also see that there are some countries, and especially Italy, is is lagging behind. In which we would like to have a better response of patients, because uh, so far there have been uh, in, uh, information and publications on socioeconomic consequences of cancer, uh, in especially in the United States. But in European countries, there is very little on this uh, data. And we uh, hope to finalize the survey in the coming month. And we see that there are a number of countries with a very good response, but also some are lagging behind. And we uh, want to stimulate, and, and in one of the slides that you see, there is still also a QR code that you can use and that you can distribute uh, for patients to um, um, take part in this survey, especially in the countries that are uh, still in need of a better accrual. And here you see the uh, actual data. We see that we have almost 600 uh, responses in, in Spain. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, Denmark, Norway, uh, Germany, uh, Cyprus, uh, and Belgium and France, the response is also quite okay. But when it comes to the uh, UK, Italy, and Greece, we really would welcome uh, additional responses of patients uh, because uh, we think this is a, a very important and neglected topic. And we think that uh, socioeconomic consequences uh, of cancer will also have to play a, a more prominent role in the cancer mission because we see that apart from uh, the issue that uh, uh, there's a right to be uh, forgotten as a cancer patient. Uh, but there are other issues that still need uh, attention. And we think that uh, it would be wise to have a more uh, emphasis on, on certain health economic aspects uh, when it comes to uh, equal access, equitable socioeconomic status of patients. And the last thing is how to reduce the uh, the enormous costs and prices of uh, cancer drugs. And um, we show in this slide also the QR code of um, those who want to uh, participate in the trial and, and uh, feel free to distribute uh, this slide and this presentation uh, because uh, it gives them direct access to uh, the survey and uh, we welcome uh, responses from patients. But as said, uh, the issue of this equal access to uh, drugs has, has a strong relation with the high prices of uh, innovative drugs, especially on um, uh, market launch. And we have uh, shown earlier that there are inexplicable uh, differences in the actual costs of cancer uh, drugs that are not related to the list price system because the actual costs uh, are really different and related to the, the uh, increasing uh, healthcare costs. We have shown that there is a huge difference in cancer price, but we also see that there are policy issues uh, that give rise to possible lowering of cancer prices. And in Cancer Discovery in uh, February, we published uh, a paper of an economic experiment in which we show that transparency in price negotiations can really reduce cancer prices without damaging research and development costs. And that is an, an uh, aspect that uh, pharma companies always uh, claim that if prices go down, research and development will suffer. We have shown in an ex economic experiment that is not necessarily the case, uh, especially if you uh, show full transparency uh, also on the uh, underlying uh, research and development costs. And this is a, a kind of breakthrough economic research 
that shows that the initiative of the European Parliament to stimulate transparency in cancer pricing is a very important aspect to further follow up upon, as this can uh, improve the access of patients uh, all over Europe. So we uh, stimulate uh, the European Parliament through the EFPN and through our research in striving for more transparency and especially full transparency in drug pricing, as this really can have an effect on drug prices. So this was a short overview of our uh, work and cancer economic aspects, and we hope uh, that you can uh, build further on this information. So thank you very much. And I will stop sharing now. Um, thank you very much. Oh, thank you.